five seconds. That's the real limit on most AI video generators. Not because the clips look bad, but because everything falls apart the moment you try to make them longer. Characters drift, styles change, cuts feel random. So, in this video, I'm giving you the exact framework to turn short generations into longer, coherent scenes. And I'll show you three simple tricks that push past the 5 second wall while keeping your character consistent. If you want long AI videos that actually feel like one scene, you're in the right place. Let's build it. Before we dive in, I have a small favor to ask. If you enjoy the content here and you find it valuable, the best way to support the channel is to hit subscribe and leave a positive comment. It's a simple, free way to help us grow and bring you even better content every week. All right, let's build the framework. This is the five-step framework. Step one is script plus scene plan. This is where you map the video into short, reliable scenes. Intro, main action, reaction, transition, ending. And you also decide the narration for each scene. That means you're not just planning visuals, you're writing the exact voiceover beats too. What the narrator says, what your characters say, if they speak, and the tone you want. Once the scene plan and VO lines are locked, everything else becomes way easier because you're generating with a clear blueprint instead of guessing. Step two is locking your character. And this is the part most people skip. The key is defining a strong base image first, because that's what keeps your character consistent across every scene. Ideally, generate one full body shot, one close-up headshot, so the face stays locked. Those two references usually do the best job for consistency. For this step, you can use the new ChatGPT image model or Nano Banana to generate those base images before you start animating anything. Step three is to generate stills first, then animate. And this is where most AI video drift gets fixed. You separate stills from animation because a still image is your control point. It locks the character's face, body proportions, outfit details, and the exact composition of the shot. If you try to generate motion first, the model starts inventing frames, and that's when the identity slowly shifts. Different face, different clothing details, even a different art style. So the workflow is, create the exact frame you want as a clean starting image, then animate that image. This way, the motion becomes an add-on, not a reinvention, and you get way more consistency across scenes. It also makes revisions easier. If one scene looks off, you regenerate just the still, instead of rebuilding the whole sequence. Here you need to extend your video, stay with me, and I will explain it later. Step 4 is voiceover plus narration. Now you take the exact narration and character lines you wrote in step 1 and generate the voiceovers scene by scene in Gemini 2.5. Keep it modular, one audio file per scene, and separate files for character lines if you have them. That way you can swap a single line, fix pacing, or regenerate one scene without touching the whole video. Step 5 is editing plus polish. This is where you assemble everything into a real long video in CapCut. Drop scenes into the timeline. Line up visuals to the voiceover, then add music, sound effects, captions, and simple transitions. Do it in that order. Voice first, then music under it, then SFX, then captions, so it stays clean and doesn't turn into a noisy mess. Cool, that's the framework. Now, let's make it faster and easier with the three tricks. Trick 1. Generate the whole draft in one place. Fast. This one is free to use. We're using CapCut AI Video Maker. Here's the fun part. It can generate a script from one prompt, create matching visuals with consistent characters, and build a first draft timeline automatically. Even if you don't love the motion, it's the fastest way to get story, scenes, and continuity without stitching everything by hand. I'm going to show you exactly where to click, how to generate the first draft, and then how to upgrade the motion using the other methods. Open CapCut on desktop. Once you're on the main editing screen, look at the top menu. Choose AI Video Maker, then click Brainstorm with AI. This opens the AI planning panel where CapCut can generate your script and storyboard from one simple prompt. In the prompt box, type one clear sentence about what your video should be about. Keep it simple and specific. Here you select the video duration. And this is the killer feature. You can push it all the way up to 10 minutes, then click Generate. CapCut will produce a draft script. Read it quickly. If it's too long, rewrite the same idea in fewer words and generate again. If it's too generic, add one detail to your prompt, like the setting or the type of narrator voice you want. When you like the script, confirm it to move forward. Next, CapCut turns that script into a storyboard. Next is voice. Go to voiceover and select voice. CapCut will generate a script voiceover to cover your video. Here you can use CapCut's built-in AI voice 
choose your narrator and you'll see different options that are actually pretty good. Then you can add it to your video in one click. You'll see your video broken into sections or scenes. This is where you add visuals on the timeline. Click scenes, select media, then click generate AI media. Choose your style and aspect ratio, then select apply to all scenes, all in one click. And this is actually really helpful. CapCut generates all the images for you as a full story and it keeps the character surprisingly consistent across a longer video. That's not very common for free tools. You can check each image one by one. And if you see something odd, you can regenerate and replace it with a new image directly here. Scrub through and check three things. First, is the main character consistent across scenes? Second, do the scenes roughly match the story flow? Third, is the motion usable or does it feel like slow floaty camera movement? Yes, the downside is that these are stills. But don't worry, because we're about to fix that. If the motion feels too weak, don't regenerate everything. Instead, keep the script and the scene structure and treat the generated visuals as your reference storyboard. This is important. In the next methods, I'll show you how to take those same scenes, create longer and better motion clips, and then drop them back into this timeline for the final video. Next, captions. Go to Elements and choose a caption template to get clean, animated subtitles fast. If you want word-for-word -word subtitles later, you can also switch into deeper editing and generate captions there. You can also add other effects here. Now music. Go to the audio section and choose music, pick a track and add it to the timeline in one click. Here is where we'll make a difference. What most creators miss. Click edit and it will take you into the standard CapCut editor where you can control everything on the timeline. Here's the key thing to understand. CapCut generates still images for your scenes. They look great, but they're not real motion yet. So this is the step where we turn those stills into animated clips. Inside the editor, you can click any scene and swap or adjust any element. The image, the text, the timing, the transitions, the music, everything. Now let's upgrade the motion. This is where trick two comes in. Pick one scene image on your timeline, click it and export or download that image to your device. Then take that same image into a free image to video generator like Meta AI. Now watch this. This is how you turn one clip into a longer scene. Go to meta.ai and sign in with your Instagram or Facebook account. Once you're in, click the plus icon next to the message box and choose create. Select image first. Now upload your still image. If Meta gives you an option to pick an aspect ratio, choose it here because this is what will control the shape of your video later. If you don't see an aspect ratio picker, that's fine. Meta will usually follow the shape of the image you upload. After the image loads, you'll see it on screen with a few action buttons underneath it. If you want to tweak it before animating, use the edit options to adjust small things like style, background or accessories. When you're happy with the image, you're ready to animate it. Look for the button that says generate video or animate. Tap that and Meta will turn your image into a short animated clip. If it gives you an option to add motion instructions, write one simple line describing what should happen if you prepared it with your script, then tap Generate. When the video finishes, preview it. If it looks good, tap Download to save it. Now watch this. Here's how you make the same scene last longer. Under the finished clip, look for the Extend button. Tap Extend, and Meta will generate a continuation of the same scene. When it finishes, you can tap Extend again to keep stretching the clip out even more. This is perfect when you need a scene to hold for longer, like a slow reveal, a reaction moment, or extra B-roll, without having to generate a whole new shot. One important downside is that you don't control what happens in the extended part. Meta decides how the scene continues based on the last frame, so it can be a little unpredictable. But if your original scene is simple and clear, the extensions are honestly amazing. And yes, you can also add lip sync with the same image. If you want the full step-by-step -step for lip sync, check my previous video because it's inside the mobile app and the buttons are slightly different there. Now the next trick is in Grok. Grok isn't unlimited. It has daily limits, but for this framework, it's still one of the best options because it helps you build longer, more consistent scenes for storytelling. This is the aha moment. It's how you keep continuity without restarting the scene. First, you want to turn off automatic video generation because that can burn your daily limit faster than you want. Open Grok, click your profile icon, go into settings, then look for the option that automatically generates video when you upload an image and turn that off. Now go back to the video creation screen. 
Upload the image you're using for your story and generate your first video clip. When the clip is ready, scrub all the way to the last frame. Right-click directly on the video and choose Copy Last Frame. This saves the final frame as a new image you can reuse as the bridge into the next clip. Now paste that last frame image back into the prompt box as your new starting image. Add a short prompt describing what should happen next, keeping the same scene and character, then generate again. This gives you a continuation that feels like the next shot in the same sequence, because you're always starting from the exact last frame of the previous clip. You can repeat this process multiple times, each time. Go to the end of the newest clip, copy the last frame again, paste it back into the prompt box, add the next action and generate. Because Grok automatically adds background sound, here's the important tip. Include one line in your prompt telling it to generate the video with no background audio. Otherwise, you'll end up with mixed, inconsistent sounds between clips and you won't be able to stitch them into one clean, continuous scene. If you do it step by step like this, you can build a longer cinematic sequence that stays consistent, clean and connected to your original image without the scene randomly resetting every 5 seconds. Now go back into CapCut. Replace the still images with the animated clips you generated in Meta AI and Grok and drop them into the exact same spots on the timeline and repeat that for the scenes you want to feel alive. Let's try it with one scene right now so you can see the full loop from CapCut still image to animation and back into your final edit. Once everything is ready, if you have the paid version of CapCut, you can enhance the video and push the quality even more. If not, just export it as an MP4 and you're ready to go. I hope this framework and these tips make it easier to build longer AI videos that actually feel connected, not random. If this helped you, let me know in the comments and hit like, so I know to make more breakdowns like this. If you want more free tools and workflows for AI video, check out my next video. I'll leave it right here on screen. Thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.